Any better? No, I don't know. I think I just didn't have uh, the thing selected. It's kind of weird. It keeps bumping my device on and off. I really just need to buy myself a USB hub so things can stay plugged in full time. <laughs> Anyways, welcome to uh, our changelog for uh, or our video changelog for 3.12, um, our latest release. So some cool stuff that people have been waiting for and a couple of neat things to, uh, to show off. So without further ado, uh, why don't we set a little bit of ambiance, uh, put on some more of Michael Gelfie's wonderful music. We'll just have the plane of fire going on in the background because that sounds like a wonderful thing to do. So hopefully you can now hear a little bit of magma bubbling in the background, at least if I did this right. Um, so to start today, a uh, couple big things. Um, first one, we have the ability boost manager, something that was teased a little while ago. So I've uh, got my friendly dwarf Kazak here and uh, I'm going to uh, start rebuilding him up. So obviously he's a dwarf, so we'll drag him in. Um, but you know what? This is kind of cumbersome to do with the clicking and the dragging. Why don't I just hop over to the uh, the compendium browser for a minute? So you'll see there's a, a new button up top. Uh, right here we could filter compendiums, and so if I wanted to know things like equipment, I could type in equipment, but what if I just wanted to search everything? I can really do that now. Um, so I mean, he's an anvil dwarf. So if I type in anvil, um, with this little toggle on, now I can just search all the compendiums at once. And there we go, blacksmithing and uh, leatherworking. Or no, let's say stone masonry. Seems more dwarfish. So there we go. So yeah, new search capability. It's it's a lot of fun. I've been playing around with it for a while. Um, like a good dwarf, let's make him a, a fighter. Um, so I can go to my classes, drag in the fighter. And background, I don't know, I'm going to actually look. I know. We'll make him an amnesiac. Why? Because it's got one of those weird things where it's actually three boosts. Um, so there, I've set it all up. You'll notice down here at the bottom, uh, there is the ability scores. It looks a little bit different, and it has the little edit button. Um, you can either choose to use a custom matrix, where you can just type in what you want and set the key ability, uh, or we can go through and set it. So by default, the dwarf is uh, con wisdom and a flaw in charisma. Uh, well, we're a dwarf fighter, so let's be strong. Um, so Amnesiac here, we get three boosts. Um, it doesn't lock in and say the GM shall do this, because one of the boosts is assigned by the GM, because the player doesn't know what they're good at. Uh, so there's there's edge cases that we honestly just don't care about, because they're rare backgrounds. Um, so we leave it up to the player to set, because it's still the player's character sheet. There are things that should be discussed with the GM. This is one of them. Um, so we can sort of set our boost for strength, um, we're going to make strength our key ability score, and at level 1 we'll obviously take strength. Um, fighter, let's take some constitution, and um, I get two more boosts, so I don't know. We'll say intelligence, wisdom, let's make charisma not awful. Ah, oh, no, we'll leave charisma awful. So there's a, there's a random fighter uh, uh, spread. Uh, so there, there we've created our, our dwarf with uh, automatically created ability scores. So we'll level him up to level five. Um, we're going to make him an expert. Well, he's a dwarf, so let's say hammers. And uh, if I go back, oh, look, I need to add more boosts. So if I add strength, you see it goes up to 19. We can do another con, um, intelligence, wisdom. And we can complete that. Now that reflex save looks a little bit low, so why don't I go back here and give him some full plate. Alright, we can just equip that. And now he's got bulwark. So 13, 12, 12 is a pretty good spread for saves uh, for a fighter. And so there you go, that's our two biggest new features uh, with the ability boost manager and uh, the, the content search from the compendium. So why don't we drop in Valoros here, because um, two fighters are always better than one. And what we can see with Valoros is Valoros has a critical specialization in swords. So if Valoros now rolls a critical strike, automatically every single weapon that's qualified, which for Valoros, uh, he has master efficiency in both um, normal and, uh, or sorry, simple and martial swords. So you'll get this critical specialization uh, popping up as a, a note to remind you that, hey, you rolled a crit, 
and because of that you have the specialization and it works and that's built in now to the critical specialization class feature uh, you'll probably have to update uh, your your character so reduce uh, reduce to level zero bring it back it'll refresh all the class features and you'll be good you notice that the shield boss however uh, because he is not master in shields because it's a martial weapon he's only expert other than uh, swords so you'll see striking shield boss it doesn't give me the note however let's just say I'll, I'll hop over uh, to his skills go down and I'll just make martial weapon weapons temporarily give him mastery go back to my shield boss roll the critical again and voila there you go I knock the target back five feet force movement so the critical specialization just turns on automatically didn't have to do anything didn't have edit any weapons just change the toggle and the, the system figures it out because of some really cool rule elements uh, one of the other things that we've added uh, so you'll see here Thalaros four dying pips so why don't we give him the doomed condition so we set him to doomed one and you'll notice that in the dying he loses one of his spots doom two doom three you can see that now his uh, his dying indicator will finish off a little bit earlier. As, as I reduce the doom conditions, those go away. Uh, we did a couple of cool upgrades as well to familiars, so let's give Valorosa familiar. So here's our new familiar. We'll set Valoros as his master. Um, and so you can see now we can give familiars temporary hit points. Uh, we can also track their death and dying. And for conditions, we can now increase and decrease their conditions. So for those of you who want to play with uh, you know, familiars that are a little bit more than just on the player's shoulder, um, you can make them frightened, for instance. And you'll see it will reduce their skills. So for those of you who work with familiars, again, we haven't done anything to support all of the uh, more advanced familiars, just uh, just the, the basic ones. At some point, we'll try and work on specialized familiars, but it requires a little bit more effort. But familiars can now have conditions. Familiars can now have dying states that can be tracked. Uh, all in all, pretty awesome thing. Now, lots of people keep getting tripped up, and we keep getting requests for module help. Oh when really the module is deprecated. Uh, what we've done, let's add the toolbox, which has been deprecated. When it reloads, you will now get an egg every time you load, telling you the toolbox is unmaintained and that the loot generator, which is a dependency, is unmaintained. For those of you with 100 modules, half of which haven't been touched since version 7, you might have a page of yellow when you start. Uh, we do not feel bad about this because it warns you that if you get any of those yellow pop-ups, please don't come to us for help. You're doing it to yourself if you're choosing to use it. Go seek help with the modules to get them up to date, or uninstall them and find replacements. Because once you remove the toolbox and loot gen, you reload, the nag is gone. Uh, the last thing that I want to show you from this particular update is uh, a handy one. So we can search and follow the expert is one of those things that's a little bit of a pain to do in the game. So right now, um, Kazakh here, we didn't really train him in anything. I think he gets crafting automatically. Um, but he's with Valoros, and Valoros, uh, because of who he is, just wants to jump across this lava pit. So Kazakh being untrained says, you know what, I'm not going to do that. It seems a really bad idea to jump across a pit of lava. And Valoros is just like, no, 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 follow me. I'm an expert in this. So he says, okay, we take follow the expert. We are going to do athletics to try and jump across um, using Valoros' mastery. So Valoros will run up, and uh, with his athletic score, which you can see plus 13, he will attempt to jump across. Uh, a 24 lets him jump about 24 feet, which is just enough to get to the other side. Uh, Kazakh says, well, I can repeat exactly what you did, and uh, we'll look at Kazakh. So Kazakh, as we see, is absolutely untrained in athletics, but thanks to following Valoros, he gets a plus 5 to his athletics, which adds his level, and an additional plus 2 circumstance bonus because Valoros is an expert. And so he rolls, and rolls a 2, and ends up in the lava taking a whole lot of environmental damage and dying. Because following the expert does not mean that you're intelligent. Uh, so that's the last sort of cool one that we've added on to the system. There's probably a bunch of other little things, lots of data updates. Uh, those are the big ones for us. 
The other major announcement uh, coming out in just a couple of days will be book three of Outlaws of Alkenstar. Uh, if you haven't seen what the modules for books one and books two look like, this is even better. It's really amazing having a look at uh, what you get in this one with all the additional effects that have been added in. It's, it's kind of crazy, and all you have to do is literally one click to install. Uh, that this sort of stuff is coming out um, it is always just fantastic. Um, other than that, we have our normal slew of stuff coming for July and several books coming out that we'll try and have out for uh, release date or whenever we're releasing close. Uh, finally, we're sort of getting close to the end of the rev the final cycle for uh, V9 and getting ready to start to move to V10. So there might be one or two more feature releases. After that, it might be a little bit of data update or a little bit of housekeeping and bug fixing. But new features will probably wait after one or more two releases until we move over to V10 and all the new cool toys that Foundry version 10 is going to have to offer for us. Um, that's all I have for you today, trying to keep it short and sweet and show off all the cool stuff that's been added in. And if anyone has any questions, I will um, happily stick around for a couple of minutes. Oh yeah, that's one thing. We have added some of the uh, materials, so thanks Shark. Uh, some of the materials from the third errata have been added in, so if you are a ranged attacker, uh, you can still cause flanking. So if I have Kazek and Valoros, which this probably isn't going to work because I'm not going to be assigning them to a player character. I think I might have... I don't even know if there's a player account in this world anymore. Uh, but if you were to use a ranged weapon, the ranged weapon will no longer trigger automatic flanking. If you're standing on the other side and have an unarmed attack, it will still proc for a person on the other side. So if you're standing right beside in point-blank stance and you can still kick someone that's threatening enough that uh, you can cause flanking for the other person, but you will no longer gain a flanking bonus to your range strikes. So with that, thanks for coming to the stream. Uh, if you have any other questions, feel free to hop over to the Discord. There'll be lots of us always around. I'm happy to help out. Thank you so much, and I wish everyone a pleasant evening.